Hey, I'm Melanie from Female Fitness Systems and today we're talking about training post hysterectomy. So I'm going to walk you through training right after your surgery and then we'll talk about what you can expect in the months following your surgery and then I'm going to give you an update on my own training two years post hysterectomy. Now I'm not going to go into detail about my surgery. I've got other videos here on YouTube which you can watch if you're interested but what I wanted to do before we get started is let you know that I do have a training program that I created to help you ease back into training post-surgery. I'm going to mention it again at the end of the video, but in case you miss it, I'll also leave a link to it in the description of this video, and you can check that out if you want some help getting back to training in a really safe, gentle way. So it's hard to believe it's already been two years since my surgery. So much has changed, but it really does feel like it was just yesterday. So many of you have told me how helpful you've found my other videos here on YouTube, and also you've mentioned that nobody's talking about training which is why I wanted to go more in depth on the topic for you today so that you know what you can expect because I know that so many of you are worried about what's gonna happen to your training after your surgery so what can you expect post-surgery well most of you are going to be told that you can't start training again till about six weeks after your surgery and in my experience working with women Women. in my experience with the women going through my post-surgery training program usually around that five to six week mark is about right now during this time I was still very tired so I was keeping my workouts short I was keeping them around that 30 minute mark and I definitely was not lifting heavy and I would also say that one of the things that you would probably want to avoid is any stretching or twisting. So I wouldn't think yoga would be a good thing at this point in your recovery. The other thing I would say is that I was so, so tired during this time. So I needed a lot of rest and a lot of sleep. So the most important thing is going to be that you listen to your body and that if you are up for training, then you train, but if you aren't, then you just take rest and prioritize that over anything else. I found that giving myself one day of training and then one day off and then one day of training and one day off worked best for me. On those off days, I just focused more on walking and that was a really good way for me to ease back in. Now, what I do also wanna mention is that at this stage, there is still so much you can safely do there are so many exercises, for example, that you can safely do laying on the floor. And when you support yourself laying on the floor, you take pressure off your surgical area, off your core, off your pelvic floor, and there's so much you can still safely do. So it's not that you can't do anything. You just have to be really careful about what you do and how you're doing it. And you just have to listen to your body. As my surgeon told me, you'll know when you're ready for something and just listen to your body and trust it. Now, some ladies start training at this point and realize that they're not ready for it. And so in my post-surgery training program, I've actually created the flexibility. So if you do sign up for a program with me and you realize you're not quite ready to get into it, we can push the start date of it out because I think it's really important not to force things and if you're not quite ready, that's okay. So over the six months following my surgery, I slowly eased back into training. By about three months post-surgery, I was able to do mostly everything, but whenever I would try an exercise for the first time, I just made sure that I tried it with lighter weights and that I really focused on how my body was feeling. For the first little while, I avoided big exercises like heavy presses, heavy overhead presses, heavy chest presses. I avoided deadlifts and dumbbell pullovers because those put a big stretch on your abdomen and in fact I avoided pullovers for probably at least a year but otherwise by about six months I was able to do pretty much everything I was doing deadlifts I was even doing some pull-ups one of the things that I found is that when I had overdone it I would get a tiny bit of tenderness the next day particularly in my right side now I had a very big fibroid up in that right side. And so when I did feel any soreness post-surgery, I did tend to feel it in that right side. 
And so let's say the first time I did a deadlift, for example, the next day I felt quite tender in that area and I thought mm, that's probably a sign that I went too heavy and so the next time I tried a deadlift I just went a little bit lighter a few less reps and just made sure that I stepped it back a little bit and then slowly worked my way up again and so it was all really just a matter of listening to my body one of the thing I should say is that that tenderness that I'm talking about that wasn't that serious it wasn't anything like I didn't feel any pain in the moment when I was training it was just sort of the next day I felt like hmm, you know I've probably overdone things a little bit it was never anything major never anything that required any painkillers or anything like that many ladies want to know when I started training core again and this one is harder for me to answer because I've never been a big core trainer anyway I have really blocky abs and the more I train my core the bigger it gets and the thicker it gets and that's not a very good look so I tend to not really do much core training anyway my surgeon did say to me in our post-surgery wrap-up he said no sit-ups and um, because I don't really train core anyway I didn't clarify if that meant like ever because I don't really care I don't do sit-ups anyway I think there are better ways to train your core if you're going to train it so these days I am doing things like some some leg lifts like the ones where you sit in that captain's chair and do some some leg raises I can do those I can do things like transverse abdominus vacuums where you really suck everything in and hold it really intensely I would say that even now two years later I can get a tiny bit of tenderness in that right side if I overdo those but I've slowly been working my way up to doing more of them and really building a lot of strength there but as far as core training goes that's really all I do so I probably can't really say for certain when you can start training core again. Talk to your doctor or a good physiotherapist and see what they recommend. So two years later, how's it all going? Well, the first thing I have to say is that it is so, 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 so good not to have to take time off from the gym because of heavy bleeding or because my iron levels are so low. In the years leading up to my surgery, I would say probably six to maybe even eight years, I was always having to take time off from training because I would have at least a week and then closer to my surgery even sometimes two weeks of heavy bleeding where uh, you don't feel like training and you're too tired to train because your iron levels are so low and then I would finally get back to the gym and start to find my groove again but even that would take time because I would be so low energy from the iron stores being depleted and then I'd get a couple of good workouts in and then I'd have my period again and then the whole thing would start again. So it was really hard to find my groove with training and it was really hard to build muscle and to focus on getting stronger because I felt so rotten most of the time. And it is just such a gift not to have to deal with that anymore. So two years post-surgery I am absolutely loving my training again I'm training six days a week one of the problems I actually have is taking rest days because I feel like nothing's holding me back at least when I had my period I would have some days where I could justify laying on the couch now that I don't have my period I feel like I have so much more energy and I just want to go to the gym all the time so that's something that I'm struggling with I'm I have to find a better balance Another thing that has been really good is that because my iron levels are higher, I actually feel significantly fitter. And this is coming through my training, particularly when I work legs. So I used to find that things like lunges and squats would really wind me and that I had to take quite a bit of rest. Whereas once my iron levels got back up post-surgery, I was finding that I had to work quite a bit harder to actually feel tired on those exercises. So that's another thing that's been really good. Obviously, I'm feeling much better because my iron levels are higher. One thing I wanted to mention though is that just because you've had your surgery and you're not bleeding anymore doesn't necessarily mean that your iron levels are going to be okay. You're going to have to work to restore them if they were low going into surgery. My doctor said it would take about six months, 
But what I've actually found, and it's likely because of the intensity at which I train, is that I'm still struggling to keep my iron levels up even though I'm not bleeding. And I have had a few times where my iron levels have got too low. And so what I would say is monitor your iron and if you still need supplements, then take them because it's really important to stay on top of that. Even though you're not bleeding, it could still get low, especially if you are somebody who trains really hard. So as I said, I am really enjoying my training again. I really don't have any restrictions. I'm doing every exercise that I was doing pre-surgery. I love things like really heavy chest presses and really heavy overhead presses. Post-surgery, I am bringing more awareness to engaging my pelvic floor when I do those exercises, but that's something you should be doing whether or not you've had a surgery. I'm doing pull-ups regularly. I'm doing those dumbbell pullovers again. So pretty much doing everything I was doing pre-surgery, but doing it even better than before. I'm hitting a lot of personal bests and I'm absolutely loving my training again. So remember, if you want some help getting back into training, I have that post-surgery training program. You can learn more about it on my website. It's called the Comeback Program. It's a phased program, which means that it increases in intensity every two weeks, but it starts very gentle, very safe exercises. So many of them are supported, so you'll be laying on the floor or sitting in a chair or sitting against a wall. And what people tell me is that it just feels really good to be moving again. Many ladies say that it, it's exactly what they need post-surgery to ease them gently back into training. And what it'll also do is help you retain muscle mass, which is really important post-surgery. So pop over to my website, check that out. Don't hesitate to message me if you have questions. You can also leave questions in the comments of this video. I will respond to you there. I'll also leave a link to that program in the description of this video so that you can find it. The final thing I will say is that I know that you're worried about what it's going to be like for you post-surgery, but in my experience, I'm so glad that I did it. I'm so much happier, I'm so much stronger, and I'm so much fitter. And so I just wanted to leave you with that tiny bit of hope that it can be much better on the other side.